Today we're going to paint General Kenobi from Star Wars Legion. Hello there and welcome to Zorbazorb Gaming. Today we're going to be checking out how to paint General Kenobi, the mighty leader of the Republic forces from the new Clone Wars box set for Star Wars Legion. We've got a great couple of techniques we're going to be covering today. We'll be revisiting some clone armor, but checking out some new stuff like Jedi robes, of course, our first lightsaber here on Zorbazorb, which is always fun. We're going to be taking a pretty simple approach to lightsabers for now, just something that's nice and easy, that captures the energy of that sizzling, incredible weapon, uh, but isn't crazy complicated, something that you guys can achieve really simply at home to get your General Kenobi or various other Jedi down on the table nice and quickly, because we all want to get into some incredible games with these new units, but we're also going to have a nice look at our first face for the Clone Wars Legion range. Yes, of course, Obi-Wan's not wearing a helmet. Good God, what are we going to do? We'll check out some skin tones, some hair, some eyeballs, for goodness sake. It's going to be awesome. It's a really stunning model that's quite fantastic. It's, again, one of the new plastic uh, models from the clone range that is still soft plastic isn't the new hard plastics of the droids but you can really see that FFG have pushed the detail to the extreme they're looking absolutely stunning now for soft plastics uh, and he's going to be an absolute dream to paint so let's get him ready for Geonosis and dive on over to the painting table so as Obi-Wan is made from the same soft plastic material as the clone troopers he comes in a ziplock bag and a few different components so he's not too difficult to assemble uh, the first thing you want to do is just do a dry fit of all the components and make sure you've got everything and then it all works and to start off with slide his legs up into his torso then I'm going to drop his head down in you'll notice the head is designed to lock in a certain way so that he's looking in a particular direction uh, and then you've got his two arms his left arm which is of course pointing out towards General Grievous doing the your move pose and then uh, we have Obi-Wan's lightsaber in his right hand uh, pointing beside his face now depending on the uh, angle or the orientation that you put his left hand sometimes the lightsaber can kind of clip his left hand particularly if the lightsaber is is a bit bendy so make sure that you've got that left hand all the way down flat pointing out as if he's making the V uh, kind of keeping that V horizontal and then that'll give you the best chance of making sure that lightsaber doesn't look like it's cutting his hand off all the time. Now once you've got all that dry fit together and you know you're good to go, just grab a bit of glue and start gluing him all together. Now I just used the uh, plastic glue, the plastic cement that I always use, uh, which a lot of people had a lot of trouble with when using with the soft plastics of the earlier range, like the uh, Rebels and the Stormtroopers. Soft plastic glue didn't hold them together at all, but it worked fine for my clones and it works fine for Kenobi. I think it's because they've changed the nature of the plastic material that they use, which is why the clones and Obi-Wan have such a great resolution compared to the early Legion kits so soft plastic glue is absolutely fine but normal cyan cyanoacrylate super glue will be absolutely fine as well as always, make sure you're putting not too much glue, otherwise the glue spills everywhere and over melts beyond your joints. And always glue into the protruding element rather than the whole of the biscuit joints, and that way you won't kind of put too much glue that splashes out everywhere. Now once he's all glued up, we of course need to base him before we can dive into painting. Now you could just glue him straight down, but as always, I like to pin my models to their bases with Star Wars Legion, particularly because of the softer nature of these plastics. You know, the glue just doesn't hold them, and you'll drop the dudes and they'll fly off their bases. So I've just got my pin vise here, drill a hole in both the foot of Obi-Wan and in the base and throw a little bit of one millimeter brass rod in either direction. Now when I am gluing this I do use super glue uh, because you're gluing plastic to metal and metal to plastic you need a glue that's going to bond to all of those elements and of course plastic cement isn't going to glue the brass rod so make sure you use super glue for that and then once he is all glued together and based it's time to do our last little bit of prep before we can paint him and that is removing the mold lines. Now the clone troopers and the soft plastics in Star Wars Legion in particular have quite significant mold lines. They're not as bad as the droids on the hard plastic sprue, so you're gonna need to do a little bit of work here to make sure that there's no kind of really obvious creases in Obi-Wan's armor or anything like that. So I just grabbed the back of my scalpel blade and anywhere you've got that thin seam of plastic left over from the molding process, just rub it back and forth with the kind of flat edge of that scalpel blade. And then if it's a really stubborn line, you can use the actual blade, but just be careful you don't take off any detail because obviously it's quite sharp. And just slowly wear them away. Really watch out for the seam lines on flat broad surfaces like the armor plates on the shoulder pads, the forearms of the arms and all of course all of the shins and legs where the clone armor really is. That's the stuff that's really obvious. Now just like our clones I'm going to be priming Obi-Wan with the Tamiya white primer uh, because of course he's got a bit of clone armor on him so it makes sense to keep that in the same scheme but that's going to work fine for the rest of our palette as well. Now there's a lot of different components that make up Obi-Wan's outfit. Obviously he's got some clone armor and then he's got a bit 
bit of Jedi robe action as well, and we're going to be using a couple of different tones to create some really nice definition across all those different fabrics. Now the first one we're going to do is paint the layer of fabric that's underneath the main robe, which you can actually see very little of. It's just seen in that V between the two robe pieces on his chest, and then around his thighs and underneath the main robe. And we're going to be using Kygor Brown, the contrast paint to paint that, because it's a nice dark brown, which will just kind of help that layer melt away and make the white clone armor and the more bone Jedi robe really pop. You want to use quite a small detail brush for this because obviously it's quite finicky work, but we can do a little bit of a wet blending trick here to help us get into those nooks and crannies without spilling it onto the wrong areas. Because of course we're using a contrast paint a lot today, we need to make sure that we preserve our prime because we need that white prime underneath the contrast layer. So it's really important that we're accurate with this quite finicky layer, and this is the reason why we're painting it first. Because if we make a mistake and accidentally paint over the clone armor or the normal Jedi robe, we can easily come back with a bit of that base coat and reprime it. So what we want to do here is put our Kygor Brown sort of as much as we can in the center of these broad flat regions and then kind of let that spread around and then while it's still wet we're going to come back with some Agrax Earthshade use the low viscosity of the shade to wet blend the Kygor Brown into the corners which will allow that pigment to flow in and we can fill in all the little nooks and details around his legs and under his Jedi robes without spilling any of that thick gloopy contrast paint all over the proper prime of those lighter layers. Our first big layer that we're going to tackle is the Jedi robe, and of course we're going to go to Skeleton Horde, my favourite contrast paint of all time. It's an absolute gorgeous paint, we've used it a lot in the various clone armour of the series, and it's perfect for those kind of creamy tan Jedi robes. So we want to do a reasonably kind of thick coat uh, all over the kind of Jedi loincloth around his waist and across his chest as well. Make sure you get it right up underneath the clone armour. The clone armour kind of sits across his shoulders and down onto his chest, but there's a little bit of fabric that goes all the way up his armpit make sure you get that as well and kind of really let that pigment sit and create some nice shading and some nice highlights kind of over the top of that quite bright white prime now it does look a little brighter which is quite nice because obviously we're not going over the wraithbone primer like we did with all the droid armor so that way we get a quite a nice distinct look for the uh, for the Jedi robe that's really nice and and warm and bone and tan as well now once that is dry we will come back and lighten this up with a dry brush but for now we're just gonna let that completely completely dry and do its thing, uh, and then we've got the basis of our Jedi loincloth ready to go. Now while that contrast paint dries, we can of course start targeting the clone armor. Now you've got to be careful when you're working with these different wet layers because if you spill any of your wet paints, they will run together. So if you want to just let this dry and, and kind of go each step at a time, that's totally up to you. But I'm kind of like to work at a fast pace and I like to kind of practice my brush control by punishing myself with uh, kind of hazardous situations. So I'm going to wet blend these, uh, sorry, uh, wet paint these at the same time. And what we're going to target next is the clone armor. Now what we're going to be doing here is the same method that I used in my clone video where we paint this not with a contrast paint but with a thinned down null oil glaze. So you're looking for about 65 to 70% Lamian medium to 30 35% null oil. Um, I've got a pre-mix of that because of course I'm painting so many clones where I've just mixed that up in a pot. Uh, just make sure if you're doing a pre-mixed glaze or if you're using the elements separately you give everything a really good shake particularly with the washes like null oil if it's not shaken up properly, you can get quite a glossy finish. So make sure you give everything a really brutal shake uh, and then just apply it really liberally over all of the clone armor. The great thing about this Null Oil Glaze is it really gets into the crevices and starts to kind of establish all of that recessed detail, but it gives you a really nice toning and creates some lovely mid-tones and highlights on the flat areas of the white armor as well. Just like we did when we painted the clone armor, we're going to do a little bit of a wet working technique here. While the glaze is still wet, I'm just going to come back in with some neat null oil, that's 100% null oil, and just hit that directly into all of any kind of crevices that I want to darken, under the knee roll, around the ankle joints. Because the glaze is so, so diluted, sometimes that recessed detail isn't dark enough, so I just like to use the neat null oil to really strengthen up those recessed areas. 
Once all your null oil work is done, it's time to swap out for some Black Templar Contrast. Now this Black Templar Contrast is a fantastic paint. It has a really nice graduation of pigment that creates some nice kind of grey highlights, particularly over the white, and does a really nice kind of thick black recess detail as well. And it's really nice on some broader surfaces. We're going to be using it here for Obi-Wan's hands, for his gloves, uh, but you can also grab it and kind of thicken up any of those extra recess details around the clone armour that just quite weren't dark enough with the neat null oil. When you're applying this to Obi-Wan's hands, make sure that you don't get any on the lightsaber, because of course that is perilously close to Obi-Wan's left hand. But you've also got his fingers in his right hand splayed around the hilt of the lightsaber. We don't want any of that black, because that'll be too dark for the contrast that we want to use on that area later. So be very careful when you're applying this to his very small fingers. So now we've got all of our base kind of shades down on our broader sections, we're just going to make sure that is 100% dry and then we're going to transition into our dry brushing phase. This is where we kind of combine dry brushing with our contrasts and glazes to create some nice highlights on the colours and kind of schemes that we've already established. The first one we're going to target is the Jedi robe and we're going to use the Citadel Dry Paint Terminator Stone. I really love these dry paints because they're really easy to use, you don't have to wick so much moisture out of your brush, so just grab a really beat up old dry brushing brush, load up the brush, and then take as much as you want off on the uh, bit of paper towel there, and then we want to quite sort of sternly dry brush over all of the Jedi robe. Now this is a really nice layer because not only does it provide a nice crisp highlight, but if you've got some of your contrast regions in those mid-tones that are too dark, you can just kind of heavily treat them, and because the Terminator stone has such a lovely pigment quality, you can kind of shade up the entire gown if you want. So I did a little bit of movement all around the waist and across the chest and created some really nice highlights to exaggerate the nice flowing contrast of that fabric. Next we're going to transition into the Praxetti White, which is of course going to be our white highlight range for the clone armour. So using the exact same technique, just make sure you use a clean brush so that you don't strew any bone through the, bone, or the, through the white clone armour. Uh, and we just want to hit all of that clone armour quite hard. Now I actually used quite a darker glaze uh, because I wanted Obi-Wan's armor to be kind of grimy and, and really kind of grungy so I'm allowing my uh, my highlight here to do quite a lot of work on those really sharp edges the corners just to make that clone armor really pop particularly around the chest plate the chest plate on Obi-Wan has some really lovely detail that we don't have in the normal clones uh, and you can really make that pop against the kind of bony color of the Jedi robe uh, by hitting that quite nicely and getting those vertical lines with some really crisp edging from the dry brushing so definitely spend a bit of time playing with how much kind of pigment you want in different areas from the dry brush and you can get some fantastic looking clone armor. So with our bulk layers down, the Jedi robes and the clone armor, we're pretty much transitioning into fine details now. The first thing we're going to do is hit the saber hilt with some Basilicanum Grey. Now these lighter colored contrasts, like the Apothecary White and the Basilicanum Grey, you really need to shake the crap out of them because you get a lot of pigment set of settling at the very bottom of the jar. So just make sure you shake it and shake it and shake it until you've got no more kind of white sort of lines or sort of sediment build up at the bottom of the pot, and that way you'll know that you're getting the right ratio of pigments when you apply the paint. So I'm going to grab a really fine detail brush and apply this Basilicanum Grey all over the saber hilt. Make sure you don't spill any on the blades and of course we don't want to get any on Obi-Wan's fingers but luckily they're black at this point so it's not too bad, you know, it's pretty easy to keep it off them because there's such a, a dark paint already they won't absorb too much of the grey contrast and we want to get that nice and well distributed kind of allowing that pigment to flow into all the cool details in his saber hilt. Now while we've got the Basilicanum Grey out you can also start to hear hit a few details on his belt. I decided to make his kind of center buckle and a couple of pouches gray. I ended up actually adding a little bit of black Templar to these as they were drying just to darken them up a little bit more, but that's just sort of preference. If you want some lighter colored pouches, the gray is perfect. Otherwise, you could use a blend or straight black Templar, depending on how you want his utility belt to look. Now while we're dealing with Obi-Wan's utility belt, we might as well work on all that brown leather element. So what we're going to do is go back to Kygor Brown, which we use for that fabric, but then we're going to blend it in a sort of 50-50% mix with the contrast medium. And this is the really great thing about the darker contrast paints, is you can essentially just lighten their tone by blending out their pigment ratio by using the contrast medium. So we're using about 50-50 here, Kygor and contrast medium, and we'll use that to kind of warm it up and make it a bit more of a, a kind of light 
lighter, earthier brown, which is going to be perfect for the leather strapping on Obi-Wan's belt. Now, this Kygor mix is actually also really close to Obi-Wan's hair tone, so we're going to go and apply that onto all of his hair as well. Now, the hair has a lot of really lovely recessed detail, uh, which kind of allows a lovely flow of pigment and gets a, a really nice kind of toning from the blended Kygor brown, but sometimes you might notice as it dries that the pigment pulls too deeply into the recesses and you can see a little bit of that white popping through even if there wasn't white when you first layered it down as the kind of pigment separates through contrast magic sometimes it pulls it off too much from those very highlights in which case I just like to kind of keep a track on that as it's drying and just blend a little bit more of my Kygor mix back in there uh, and then sometimes if it just won't go away because there's a particularly high point just come back with a little bit of a dry brush of a, a kind of generic light brown I use the Vallejo Plague Brown just to give his hair a little bit of lift to make those white spots go away. Now after you've done Obi-Wan's hair, don't forget to get his beard and his moustache and his sideburns, but it's very important that you leave his ear, which is sandwiched between the sideburns and the back side of his hair and his beard, leave them white so that we can get some nice skin tone on them at a later date. And that way you'll get a really nice flow of hair that's really obvious because you've got the obvious distinction of that ear and the cheek against the sideburn and the beard. Once his hair is completely dry, we're going to put down the base layer for our skin tone. Now I'm going to be using the Kislev Flesh layer paint. I'm not going to put down a kind of traditional base coat like I normally would use Cadian Flesh Tone or something similar, but because we've got the white down today instead of a normal darker grey or black, I'm going to go straight to my layer paint. Now I'm going to thin Kislev Flesh a little bit because it is quite a thick gluggy paint and we don't want to obscure our paints, so I'm just going to drop a little bit of Lamian Medium, just traditional Lamian Medium, not the contrast medium onto my wet palette, draw that out and apply just a really nice smooth even layer all over Obi-Wan's face. We want to get you know his eyes, his cheeks, his jaw, all of that area moving right up to the beard but not going over the top of the brown and don't forget his ears which of course we left bare and then the underside of his neck as it moves down to his uh, Jedi robes and his clone armor. So make sure you get all of that skin tone and then we've got a really nice groundwork for our flesh. So while we wait for that skin layer to dry, we're just going to work a little more on the saber hilt by grabbing some Stormhost Silver, which is of course the new version of Mithril Silver, and we're just going to do a really light kind of almost a, a dry brushing highlight, like a bit of an overbrush on the saber hilt, picking up all of the raised details and just giving it a little bit more of that silvery sheen than the grey that we've got there at the moment. The great thing about the grey is it creates that sort of shade and that undertoning. If you went straight metallic, you'd have to wash it to try and really push some shades into it which can be quite difficult. So this little silver highlight gives a nice kick to the saber that looks lovely and natural. Once your skin tone has dried, it's time to go to our absolute workhorse shade for skin tone, which is of course Reichland Flesh Shade. We're going to apply this pretty liberally. You can allow it to flow through the blends between skin and hair because that sort of helps the warmth of the skin that would be underneath and just allow that to get really nice through all of the creases, but make sure you don't get any kind of over pooling in areas of the skin because uh, we want to kind of leave it quite looking natural so it's easy to create some skin highlights. While we wait for the shade to dry, because it's imperative that we don't do any layers while that shade is wet, we're gonna start working on the lightsaber. Now I'm not gonna do anything crazy fancy for this lightsaber scheme, this is just a super simple method that gets you a pretty decent looking saber that isn't any kind of crazy, you know, object source lighting technique or, or anything kind of mind blowing. It's really simple, but it's great enough to get him down on the board with a nice blue saber. So what I'm gonna be doing is creating a blue glaze, which is quite thin to put down first. Now I'm using Azumin Blue, which is what one of the really old school Games Workshop washers, but you could use any blue paint and just dilute it a little bit more with Lamian Medium. So I've grabbed my Azimut and diluted that with the glaze or with Lamian Medium to create the glaze and put that down all over the saber. Now what I'm doing is coming back with neat Azimut blue and kind of applying it across the top and across the bottom of the saber, not over the entire blade. And that way you get areas on the blade that have a high saturation of pigment. It automatically flows across the glaze that I've got there and creates a sort of nice gradient of color so that the entire saber blade isn't exactly the same color. And you get a little bit of nice pooling in different areas and I'm just trying to kind of capture the energy of that crackle of kind of saber, you know, magical force lightsaberiness. So we want to get a little bit of variety and a little bit of, of a natural variation into what would be a pretty chaotic explosion of energy coming from the hilt. Now, once that is done, you can see I'm kind of finicking with it quite a bit, bringing in a little bit more of that pure 
neat azimuth blue across the top, across the bottom, and then I come back a little bit more with my glaze and wash it all out. And then you want to let that completely dry and we'll come back and add a crisp highlight a bit later on. While I've been dicking around with those glazes, our flesh tone shade is now finished, so now we're going to do a nice simple highlight, just with a blend of that same Kislev flesh that I put down, and bone white from Vallejo, which is the same as Yushabti bone, I think from Games Workshop, any kind of bleached bone colour. And we're going to do a bit of a 50-50 mix of bone and Kislev flesh, just to create kind of one tonal variation lighter for our highlights. Now it's really important the way that we highlight this model, because there's some beautiful natural kind of bone formations that we can access and it's a really, really easy job. One of the easiest highlights I think I've ever done this model. It's a nicely sculpted face. We want to hit the nose, the top of the nose going down over the nasal cavities, but not all the way down into that recessed joint. And then we want to hit the tops of the cheekbones, leaving a little bit of skin between the cheekbone, the nose, and leaving a little bit of that underneath layer before we get to the hair. And then we want to hit the two eyebrows, which are quite accentuated. They're kind of ridging down towards the top of the nose. And then we just want to create a couple of thin brow lines going up his brow towards his hairline. So just a couple of like, you know, that's like six or seven easy brush strokes which look absolutely fantastic. Now we're going to jump into doing the eyes. Now eyes aren't for everybody, you certainly don't have to do it, but I like to create eyes on my models. For me it's just an extra layer of detail that really brings the model to life and particularly for heroes like Obi-Wan, I want him to be really captivating. So what I'm going to do is grab my smallest brush ever, grab some pure white paint, I'm using I think white scar, uh, and and we want to keep it nice and thin and make sure there's not too much paint on the brush. You can see me taking the excess off there on my thumbnail. And then with a lot of brush control and a lot of slow breathing, we want to edge our brush slightly into the socket and just leave a small circle of white. If it's too much or you, you miss, just grab another brush that's a little bit damp and you can just brush it straight off, which is really a, kind of a key why you make sure that your previous layers are completely dry, otherwise you'll accidentally pull off your paint. Uh, and then yeah, just, just practice makes perfect with this one basically if you screw it up completely you can always just paint over with a flesh uh, with a fresh layer of that K Kislev flesh uh, and then you can start again so do a white dot in uh, each of the eyes and then what I'm gonna do is wait for that to dry which doesn't take too long because it's a very small amount of paint and then come back with some chaos black and do the exact same thing but doing a much smaller dot to create our black pupil now with the chaos black it's really important that you just don't have too much paint on your brush I'd say that's the biggest mistake people make because you you accidentally you either slip or you you kind of pause too long and too much paint transfers to the model and you you know you don't have a white eyeball you have a black eyeball so I like to take a lot of that paint off on my on my thumb what I kind of do is I, I load up the brush and then I go okay how many dots on my thumbnail can I do before I get to an acceptable size pupil uh, and then I go okay if it's taking me five dots to take off that paint then I'll just dip my paint brush in take four off and then apply it to the model and that way you kind of got a, a rough guide or a rough estimation of what's going to be coming out of that brush at that time. So yeah, with eyes, practice makes perfect. Give it your best shot, uh, and you can always start again by painting down the skin tone. Once the eyes are completely dry, one thing I love to do is to just hit them again, just the eye sockets and the eyeballs with a little bit of Reichlin flesh, because of course our eyes aren't perfectly white. They've got a lot of pink in there. They've got a lot of blood vessels and capillaries and things, and I really find that this kind of helps blend them into the face and, you, and kind of helps mitigate if you get that, like, you know, wide-eyed look like someone's, all your models are surprised because your eyes are too big. Blending in with flesh tone can help a lot with that. So with the eyes and the face done, we're nearly there. We're going to grab our Praxetti white dry brush paint again, and we're going to load up a bit of paint onto our dry brushing brush and hit the saber blade. Now this is where we're going to create that white highlight. This really lightens up the blue and gets a bit more of that energy crackle kind of color, uh, but it still allows the kind of graduated tones of that blue glaze blend underneath to uh, to allow that variation of energy sizzling to come through. But you know, there's going to be a lot of highlights with explosions, right? It's essentially a big you know, beam of energy, so it just kind of hints at that a little bit more and gets it in the right tonal range. Now the final thing we want to do paint-wise is paint our base. So I'm just going to throw down some charred brown uh, from the Vallejo Game Color range and put that all over the brace on the rim as well as the kind of broad section as well, and uh, and that's going to be the basis for the basis, the basis for our base scheme, uh, which is what we're going to use to create a nice Geonosian scheme to match the rest of my clone troopers, who are of course going to be duking 
taking it out on Geonosis against these droids and Grievous. So once that charred brown is completely down and completely dry, I'm going to use my Luke's APS Mars Earth Base Ready Mix to create the perfect Geonosis base. Now you can get this uh, base ready mix from my store, zorpazorp.com. You can check that out in the description. Uh, and it's just an amazing blend of grouts and soils and rocks that you just put a bit of glue on the base, dip it in, and it's ready to go. It's fantastic. So I'm going to grab my Luke's APS Base Ready Mix, which is a lovely sticky glue. Absolutely fantastic for basing. Put that on the base pretty thick and then kind of grab like a, a skewer or, or a, a popsicle stick and just spread it around really carefully, making sure to not get too much of it on Obi-Wan's boots. A little bit's fine because there'd be mud flicking up everywhere as he runs across the plains of Geonosis. And then once you've got a nice thick coating of that glue, just dip it down into the Mars Earth Base Ready Mix uh, and that will all kind of adhere and seep into the glue uh, and then really kind of bind in. Now, because this is a fast drying glue, but because we're going to be applying a little bit of paint to this Mars Earth so that we can tone it to be a little bit more of that Geonosian orange than the Mars Earth red, uh, what I'm going to do is leave this for like two or three hours so that that latex glue fully bonds and so that I can paint it. Um, it's, it's pretty much good to go, otherwise it doesn't slide around too much. It's, it's quite quick drying, 15-20 minutes. But if you want to paint it, let it dry for a little bit longer. Once it has dried, just tap off all the excess. I like to come in with a dedicated brush and brush off all of that excess uh, Mars Earth so that you don't have any loose rubble kicking around. And then we're going to start to tone it with a couple of colours to bring it more into that Geonosian orange. The first one we're going to use is the Plague Brown from Vallejo Game Color, and I'm just going to put a little bit of that in my palette and load up quite a broad brush, then take most of that paint off and just lightly dry brush across the top of the rocks. We want to really kind of establish a mid-tone here. If you imagine the Mars Earth is our undertone, this orange is going to be our mid-tone, uh, and then we want to hit all of the areas of the rock, the kind of rubble, all the different chunks, and then we're also going to use this to dry brush around the rim of the base uh, just to lighten that up and blend it into the Geonosian scheme as well. Once that plague brown is down, I'm just going to grab the bone white from Vallejo Game Color, and we're just going to do another quick dry brush across the very top of the Geonosian Earth, just to give it a nice kick, a nice highlight, as if the sun is beaming down on the Geonosian Plains. And there we have a fully based and ready for war General Kenobi. Now I'm absolutely stoked with this paint scheme, particularly for how long it took me. This was probably like an hour, an hour and a half's work. It's definitely a very, very doable scheme. Um, it's not sort of crazy complicated. You could definitely go more intense doing kind of, you know, really edge highlighting on all of the uh, the Jedi robes and going a bit more crazy with object source lighting from the lightsaber. So potentially we could look at doing a, a more in-depth look at lightsabers and a couple of extra complex techniques, but I think this guy is perfect for getting down on the table to smash out some games and hunt some clankers. So there we have it guys, I am pretty stoked with him. I think he looks pretty fantastic. We could have gone crazy more detailed if we really wanted to, but I just want to get him down on the table and start doing some awesome battle reports. Such a fantastic unit. I just love that he's in the your move pose. It's it's so cool, particularly as he's pairing off against General Grievous, right? So there's definitely going to be some cool photo shoots themed around that, I think. But yeah, uh, a huge fan uh, of the model and I'm really happy with how we turned out. Did you guys like the paint job? Do you have any other suggestions or ideas on ways you'd like to see him? I mean, it'd be fun to do like an object source lighting with the whole blue kind of shimmering all over his face but I've never painted OSL before so that could certainly be a fun case study down the track doing some lightsaber OSL and some more in-depth lightsaber work but I'm happy with how he's turned out today if you guys have any other uh, kind of Legion painting tutorials you'd love to see drop them down in the comments below or any other thoughts or suggestions just fire away make sure you check out all our other tutorials we've got here on the channel for Legion we've got clones and droids and droidicas and a whole lot more coming up as well as some amazing amazing battle reports on the horizon as well once I get all these guys finally ready for the table. Thanks so much to FFG for sending me over the core set early so that I could finally get these guys painted. We've got, uh, yeah, not too long to wait hopefully. It's looking like October the 18th could be finally a firm release date for kind of nationwide release. We've been seeing a bit of leaked product and stuff so it's kind of getting into the hands of you guys at home now but soon everyone will have it which is really exciting. So hopefully this video is useful. Subscribe if you're new around here and make sure you check out our Patreon if you want to support the channel. It's a fantastic way to get behind us and we've got a whole lot of exciting stuff ready to be unveiled for our 10k celebration which is super exciting for us here at Zorbazorp. So make sure you check that out and thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time here at Zorbazorp Gaming. Cheers guys.